What's up everybody and welcome to a very special episode of Robitech. Question we're asking, is the 3060 worth getting and where does it fit for you? Well, you're gonna find out right now here on Robitech. Guys, we are very excited because for the first time, we are taking a look at a brand new card before it is released. Yes, this has been something we've been wanting to do, but does this mean that we are not going to take this responsibility seriously? Absolutely not. In fact, we've spent the last four days at what, 12 plus hours, Josiah? Literally just grueling through, running benchmark after benchmark to make sure that we have a suite of data that is good enough for you. So you can make an informed decision on whether you should pick up a 3060 on day one. Now, I know, I know, it's 2020, Point one or 2021, and we know that cards are unbelievably scarce, but we're gonna take everything based on MSRP, knowing that at some point in time, things are gonna settle, and that's why we're trying to give you the data now. We want people to make informed decisions, and at some point in time, we'll all be able to do that in a world that is absolutely sane, even though that's not today. We wanna to make sure that we're giving you the data that you guys have come to expect from our show. So, we do know that Gamers Nexus is going to be the absolute perfect place if you wanna really nerd out on all of those crazy details, or Jay's Two Cents, which has kinda of got a mix from, for, of kind of both. For us today, it's really about, if you are going to buy a 3060, why would you buy a 3060? Is it worth buying a 3060? And then what are you gonna get out of getting a 3060? This is not going to be the super crazy in-depth technical overview. This is really for those of you who are coming to me saying, Roby, what kind of build should I put this into and what kind of number should I expect? Should I wanna get this card? And whether I should decide to get a 3060 or 3060 Ti or a 3070. That is our angle. That is how we're gonna approach this. Hopefully that's gonna make things super clear for you. And I'd love to know down in the comments below if this is actually helpful and how we can change this moving forward. Now, first, let's talk Talk about the 3060 versus the 3060 Ti. So the 3060 has 3,584 CUDA cores. It's got a boost clock of 1.78 gigahertz, and it's got a memory size of 12 gigabytes. Unlike the 3060 Ti, which is more powerful, even though these numbers are going to say differently, because it's got 4,864 CUDA cores, which is the number that's higher, it's still got a boost clock of 1.67 gigahertz, and it's got a memory size of 8 gigabytes. Now, understand this, the, memory, the memory speed for the 12 over the 8 is actually slower. So again, the 3060 Ti is the more powerful card, and you'll see a little bit more about that when we actually get further on and go through all the numbers together. We really wanted to compare this against the 3000 series suite of cards, which is where most people are actually paying attention. Couple reasons, one, Buying a 2060, a 2000 series card, or even a 10,000 series card right now at retail is actually impossible. They've stopped making them for the most part outside of the 1060. And all in all, the 1060 is just not a good buy. You should not buy that card. And we needed a new card to fill this hole at this price point. For those of you who are looking to build PCs in that $1,000 to $1,200 to $1,300 range, which is where the 1060 used to be, and now where the 3060 very nicely fits in. So now, We've set ourselves up. You're well aware of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to show you, and you're also aware of what the 3060 is and what the 3060 is targeted towards in terms of you as a consumer. So what did we do? Well, here's what we did. We went through and we scoured all of the games that actually have pre-included benchmarks. A couple of reasons for that. Number one, we wanted to make sure that we ran benchmarks that we, as we repeated using the scientific method, again, we're trying to limit the number of variables. So games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, games like Red Dead Redemption, games like Metro Exodus, and then uh, games like Horizon Zero Dawn were the ones that we specifically chose for a couple reasons. One, some tested CPU, some tested GPU, some tested ray tracing, etc. Then finally, we also ran, and because we had to, we wanted to go ahead and run it against some actual real benchmarking software, mostly from Unigen, things like Heaven and Valley, so that way you could see that data as well. We wanted to give you a proper comparison, but the second part of this is, and this is the kicker, I know that there are some multiplayer and single player games that you really care about, and we want to show you those too, but they don't include benchmarks. So games like Flight Sim, games like Cyberpunk, games like Fortnite, and games like Call of Duty. We are gonna be doing some live bench testing of that, and you can check that video out right here. Now, just as a caution, it's gonna be long. Again, we're live bench testing it, but if you wanna see that data, you can just jump through that by basically looking at the table contents there as well. The information we're gonna to provide to you here is really just about what we got from the core benchmarking stuff. Again, we're not gonna walk through the chart specifically. We're gonna show you the data to help you make an informed decision. That's what we wanna do, and then help you understand where this fits based on the data that we looked at. We're gonna show you these a bunch of charts. Josiah's gonna have some really pumping music that he's gonna use to help you uh, enjoy the 
the beauty-esque and art that, uh, that Brian provided as you stare through these charts, and uh, then we'll walk through the data. I wanna tell you real quick about the bench that we did use, so you guys just have a really clear picture of the hardware that we used when we ran these tests. These are all run on an Asus ROG Strix Z590E Gaming. It was running an Intel 10900K CPU. We used G-Skill Rip Jaw V3600 RAM, uh, it's 16 gigs at 16 by 19 by 19 by 39 in terms of our timing. Uh, our main Windows drive was a Western Digital SN 750. Our game drive was SN 750. Uh, we use a Corsair AX 1000 watt PSU, and then we use an NZXT Kraken X X73 uh, AIO for our cooling. So here we go, guys. I, I showed you a bunch of numbers, and, and at the beginning, I think setting these videos up is so hard, but I really wanna make it really succinct for you at the very end. Here's the deal. This card is fantastic. I put this together. I just said, Roby, if I, I was gonna build like a $1,200 build, let's throw a 10700K in there, because I, I know I can get that. You get a 10700K in there. You throw in 16 gigs of RAM at 3000 megahertz. You throw in an RTX 3060, for instance, from EVGA. Throw in a 650 watt PSU, one terabyte power supply, a Z490 motherboard from ASRock. It's just shy of 1200 bucks. And you're running, you know, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 120 frames per second on 1080p. Even Red Dead Redemption, you're looking at 70 to 60, you know, 70 frames per second. We're even running like Horizon Zero Dawn at 120 frames per second at 1080p, 80 plus frames per second at 1440p. You're basically running Metro Exodus at close to 50 frames per second. But then there's also Cyberpunk, which we, we've done in that live stream. If you wanna watch the whole thing, you can you can check out um, like we talked about. But again, you're talking about 1440p average, and this is with ray tracing at ultra, with DLSS at 43 frames per second, right? Like that's, that's better than a Series X, right? And we're talking like, we're getting closer and closer to Series X and PlayStation 5 in terms of cost as these cards come down, as tech comes down. Now, when you say, hey, Roby, well, should I get a 3060 Ti versus a 3060? Well, that's where things start to get a little bit interesting when you think about 1080p, because, you know, when you're looking at certain games, the 3060 Ti is capable of getting above that 120 frames per second benchmark for competitive gaming. Now, understand, we're running everything at high presets. So, so could you get 120 frames per second on a 3060? Absolutely. But if you care about graphics plus competitiveness, that's where a 3060 Ti might be a better option. And this is important. If you are a Fortnite player and you're saying, I want to play at 240 hertz, or I want to play at 360 hertz, the 3060 is not the card for you. But if you are a Fortnite player who wants to play at 60 to 100 plus FPS, then yes, a 3060 is a great card at 1080p. That's it, guys. I mean, that's, that's really it. When I think about a 3060, what I am so excited about is the fact that now we have a great option for $1,200 or budget level PCs, which we haven't had up until this point. The other thing that I love about this whole thing is that not only do you get the upgrades from the 1060 and even the 2000 series cards, but you now also get other NVIDIA features that come with the 3000 series for things like NVIDIA Reflex, which if you're a competitive player, you do absolutely care about if you care about latency and things like broadcast specifically for streamers. These are huge things that also get it in addition to upgrading just the overall performance performance of the card. That's it, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this review. A huge shout out to EVGA for providing us all the cards to be able to test this stuff early on. 
Love to know all of your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring the notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on YouTube. And also, don't forget to check out our live show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 5.30 p.m., both here on YouTube and also on Twitch. Guys, this has been absolutely amazing. It's awesome to have an opportunity to actually get to do a video like this for you. We hope you enjoy it. We wish you the best of luck in being able to purchase one of these. And if you did get one, congratulations. We'll see you on the next episode. If you want to build a $1,200 PC, which a lot of you do, I know because I get requests for it all the time, you now have an option. And this is not something that you're like, you, you used to do a 1060 and be like, man, I got a $1,200 PC that runs games like crap. And now they're not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's really kind of the benefit. And that's what the numbers show. That's really the end. Sweet. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, okay. That's awesome. Actually, that's awesome. pretty much got that whole thing anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're good.